beat you in the back of the street. It don't matter if I rhyme or not, cause you know a motherfucker's gonna smoke all your pot and your girls too. <laughs> cause I'm gonna sport the blue to the I do or rather die or multiply. I get high, I go real high. Stay here, west to east side. JTMR represents San Diego 1904 <laughs> to the world, baby. Give me the best. It's like the podcast. shoot em up, bang, bang, action, <laughs> bonanza. Get out my face, cause you know I can't stand you get body slammed. Super fly snooker. Flat on your back with a super fly hooker. I'll damage you. Leave your bandage in the morgue with a pale white face looking like boy George all girlish. And you know we get squirrelish. <laughs> in the back seat of my Jeep. No, I'll get you girl, and you know that I rock that hoes meat. It's gonna be real sweet, and I'll meet you in the back of the street. It don't matter if I rhyme or not, cause you know a motherfucker's gonna smoke all your pot and your girls too. Cause I'm gonna smoke the blue to the I do, or rather die, multi high, get multi high, get from west side to the east side. Okay? Da 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 da. It could be the best podcast intro of all time, I think. <laughs> oh my god. Another one of your hidden talents right there. I didn't know you could freestyle like that. Hey man. <laughs> In life, you get these uh, times you write. Yeah, <laughs> and for sure. It comes up, and then <laughs> words flow out your head, and then they put it on paper. You put it on paper, and you try to keep going. It's true. Or you just keep it in your frontistery, in your own personal library, inside your third eye and the brain. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think? All right, so we'll just jump right into it. I'm with John the Man Reeves, uh, professional Yo. skateboarder, artist, musician, but yeah, uh, a, a whole whole bunch, whole bunch of things. <laughs> Freestyler, actually, just found out. Um, all right, so we'll just talk right about right about that. Like you were just saying, holding in the art, like keep it in the pre prefrontal cortex. Well, I, was, <laughs> I, I I like this word. It's called the frontistery. Frontistery. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's with a pH, it starts front to stary. Um, yeah, that's just part of your own place where you can hold things in your mind, like a library. But it doesn't actually mean that it's it's not actually a, a medical term. It's just something that I like to talk about. <laughs> it, no, I didn't make the word up, oh, okay. but it's something that I like to talk about, that everyone has a front to stary in their, in their brain. Mm. So... Do you think, because you've been expressing yourself for pretty much ever, like since I know you, I guess everyone is, but like you, yeah. you know, always been doing like skating, art, something of the nature. Right. Do you think like holding that back kind of does something to your spirit? Because you seem to be like a, I don't know, high spirited kind of guy. And I feel like it correlates, you know, when you let that stuff out, it kind of. Well, it's, all, spirit, it's all, all outlets. It's all creative outlets. So you. You have to do these things to help yourself stay sane certain times in, in this life and the way we walk through this earth and the way the whole ball of confusion is, this whole place, <laughs> the world that we live in, it's just an amazing place and there's so many beautiful aspects of it and there's so many great things that you can learn, but at the same time, you need to have these outlets to help yourself stay grounded and stay sane in a in a world of uncertainty yeah i agree 100 percent. i mean because i feel like when i was a kid like the first time i realized like i was a person pretty much i was like <laughs> i wanted to make a living off of doing things like that like creative right. things and yeah you know i almost made a promise to myself like i wouldn't do something i didn't enjoy doing right and that kind of was a tough journey to follow like 30 years of not being successful at something you're like uh, oh yeah i mean you yeah. got but there's little personal success successes and things that you don't necessarily you know know about and and everyone has a different definition of success that's 100% you know true. and it's yeah. like you can't gauge what one person thinks successful is compared to what most of society thinks it is you know it's like as long if you're happy in what you're doing, that's success. But it's also successful to have a hedge fund company or be on Wall Street or have your your brand blow up and sell 
you know, all over international to everybody and everybody want it. And but that those are ups and downs. It's ebbs and flows. It flows and it goes back. It, it comes and goes. So the thing is, is that success is always determined by that person. And if you're not grounded enough sometimes in, in life, you can let that eat you up. If you think that you're not being to a place that you think that other people think success should be. Yes. You, you hold yourself right. to a standard that somebody else is. And right. Then, or, yeah, you're living to you someone else's that. standard and then not accomplishing like what would make you feel like content or, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It's just, and that's how I think how society has portrayed success is, you know, having all the, the riches and the wealth and the glamour and all that. It's like you scream and holla. It's all about the dollar, but it ain't <laughs> without complaint or graffiti paint. You got to get yours, yo, without restraint. Cause living this life is a challenge. And like I said, you best to get some balance and use your skills. Don't make no murder or kills and keep it tight like a Jedi Knight. Only then will you acquire how to keep it tight. <laughs> you scream and holla, it's all about the dollar, but it ain't. So that's all what right. I'm saying. That's so <laughs> what is what is John the Man Reed's <laughs> definition of success then? That's, that's a, um happiness. Yeah? One word. And what's that? What's that for you? Um, being content with the day to day, you know. Yeah, just being present. Yeah, I can't get into all the little, <laughs> little tiny nooks and crannies, nooks and crannies, <laughs> and the you know the details of what yeah. all makes me happy. But in general, it is trying mm. to feel not empty inside. Mm. You know, you can hit bottoms, or people hit highs mm. and lows. I think success is being able to not feel that emptiness and feel fulfilled and not have to fill that void with whether something it might be materialist yeah. it could be work it could be whatever you need to fill with yourself with like people have holes with their alcoholics their drug addicts their workaholics it could be uh ipad holic computer internet swiping the, all the places that give you dopamine in your brain that make you feel good you could go there too much and that could be a bottom there 100 yeah. percent. so if addictive. you can balance it out and be happy that's my definition mm, of success i like that so is this something you knew when you were young like pursuing skateboarding like did you think this way at all or were you just kind of like no doing what well, you were I, doing and honestly when we were growing up skating it was just about going out like ollies going fast being yeah. free not being in school not being not being at home being able to not being in church yeah because i grew up in a church not being you know free confined. is the best way to wear it i think being, yeah that freedom, freedom from, of skateboarding the freedom that you oh get God. from being with your friends and and learning new things and it's a constant teacher and you can teach yourself and you can think about other things and be creative with it so that's that's another thing why Hmm. why you know why that's that that's a good thing you know it's like hmm. so how old were you when you got into skating like how uh <laughs> well uh, around 1986 i really got into it that's when i was 13 um before that there was some kids on my block that had like boards like 10 inch wide like GNS boards with yo-yo wheels and tracker trucks with copers and rails and nose guards and and yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> tailbones and the whole they, like that. GNS was big because it was in my neighborhood. Basically, it was. In, I grew up in Mira Mesa in San Diego, California, okay. and Miramar Road was this kind of a, a factory industry like strip okay. that led to La Jolla Shores, where we where we'd end up being at and skating but back to miramar road that was where top gun was so if you watch tom cruise <laughs> yeah in top gun, <laughs> and you see like maverick and Iceman and all that stuff they're like you know at top gun that was all filmed near where i grew up and that's miramar okay and then there's mira mesa but gordon's gordon and smith which is gns skateboards had a factory on Miramar Road, and that they, and then so we, some of the first boards that we saw that were actual 
pro model skateboards were GNS. Oh, okay. and the older kids had those on my block. They would go down Canterbury sit together on the boards. There was no tr- really tricks. I maybe saw a guy spin a three sixty on flat or something, just like a kick turn. Yeah, three sixty, but that was about it. And I didn't really. And then break dancing came, so I was like, those guys were skating, but then they were older. And then break dancing came, but then I got a skateboard like. I don't know. I guess it's 86, 87. Kept doing it and then stuck with it. Yeah. And then yeah. what? That's that's when you like got met up with the Eighth Street guys around well, no, there or that something like that? Or? In 80. That's three years later. Three years later? Yeah. So, so how'd you get like, like into skating with them I think or even part like me? I think yeah. part of growing up in San Diego um, was, I don't know if it was like that in every suburb and every city in in the country but in san diego was especially something that was there surfing skateboarding and bmx it was just pro- i mean i'm sure it was like a lot a lot like that for a lot of kids yeah and then um so it was like that was just something that everybody did okay and then later people fell off and they stopped doing it you know and then like but you know then there's people that i grew up with that we skated with that are still skating today, which is amazing. Damn. And it's like, you know, something that's really special because that's what they love to do and they, and then they stuck with it. So it makes it awesome. Yeah. So wait, so when you got, so we could jump forward, right? To eighth street, like three years later. Well, before just... I can get to you, I can tell you the trajectory was. Yeah, I want to see how you like got was sponsored. There was some lo- or, like, well, you know. there, we had a, a local, we had some older dudes that were influencing us. That they had, we had this this sick crew, um, led by a guy named Dave Lively. Okay. Who, um, his son Nolan Li- Lively skates right now. Oh no, it's his his nephew. It's his nephew. Okay. It's his uh, brother's son Nolan Lively skates, and he's got a lot of good clips that i've seen oh yeah but right. um dave and phil flood and steve tran and all these other guys my friends jimmy equiling uh mike alzona uh rick perez uh we had like a bunch of other heads in this crew joe dow um but we had a crew called flom f L O L M skates. Okay. And then we got shot. We got sponsored by a shop, you know, and okay. we'd show, we would have local contests and I would win them shits. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's I awesome. would do good. And yeah? I would do good. And then I got a shop sponsor. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, you know, you get a shop sponsor, you start skating and then yeah. people. Shop sponsors are huge. That's really it's, like, it's a catalyst. Escape out. Yeah. Of that, like, yeah, because into the next world, especially almost, if you know? there's if there's uh, if the shop that you ride for is selling a bunch of a a real a good repu- red, reputable company stuff. Yeah, you know then then um they might want to see who's good, who the ta- local talent is, and mm. flow them a couple extra boards to the shop for that specific team rider that the shop had. So it connects them with the in- industry in a, in a whole, you know, right? Like that. But that was that's a little bit after too because. When I did it, when I did it, I also had like a sponsorship from a co-sponsorship from Primo Desiderio, and that came through something that he did in Vision, like with with Vision Streetwear, and, okay, and in Vision Clothing, so um, Vision Skateboards, Vision Streetwear, and Tracker Trucks, and Primo Desiderio. He we used to have this jam down at uh, Mission Beach in San Diego. It was called Big Wednesday. We would all go there and skate the <laughs> skate the uh, launch ramps and just do hand street plants and everything that Mike V was doing, you know, <laughs> like bonelesses, yeah, all that stuff. Um, slappies, but there wasn't really no one was really alling yet, like alling into things at this point. It was no? just like bonelesses, slappies, and so it was hand like 80, plants. Seven, 86, 80? 87 to eighty eight. Okay, you know, and then um. And then I so back to the thing at the Big Wednesday. Okay. Primo, he had like a day where he like had a contest for like everybody, like all the skaters in San Diego came to the the roller coaster at Mission Beach. It's kind of like that part of San Diego is kind of like Coney Island here in New York. It's okay. Like, there's a roller coaster on the boardwalk. There's there's like 
places to eat and yeah. shit, and then there's skate shops. A bunch shops of stuff going stuff. on. So everywhere. right in front of the skate shop called Hamels, Primo had an audition. It was kind of like an audition, like everyone skates, and then he picked me out of all the kids to skate for all him. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And so I started getting free vision boards and, and everything, and I didn't have to worry about getting free skateboards. And I was really? like 13, 14 at that time. Oh, damn, you yeah. were young, It was man. quick. Wow, it happened yeah. pretty quick because there wasn't that – like we saw – you know, in the first video I saw was Future Primitive, and it was Tommy Guerrero going down the sidewalk in San Francisco with yeah. that baby blue board. I've seen clips Look of that. I never saw the whole the video, but Button yeah. up, like <laughs> skating the dish with the yeah. backside early grab 360s, killing it. And then it was Gons and Nottis. We saw that, and then we knew – that that was that's where it was going. That's oh, where really? skateboarding was going. Like it was like okay, we saw the first kickflip. Like Gons do it over a fucking drit, a, a gap like a channel in a ditch. Yeah, full rocket flip. Like <laughs> <laughs> board goes like this. Yeah, but it was so sick. We we're like, oh shit, he flipped it and he landed on it. We're it must good. have been such an exciting time. Like it was all so new, yeah. and you just see him like. And we didn't know because we didn't yeah. see it. it. Wasn't mapped out. There was no tutorials on YouTube. There was no <laughs> motherfucking Tony Hawk video game or Skate Three or anything. Yeah. Like that. So it was just like super new. And back to Primo sponsored me for that that audition day that he had. Okay. It was. It was our. It was I was co-sponsored by Vision at that point, and it was Vision Streetwear, too. So you got clothes and you got sneakers and you got boards. Okay. But I wasn't on on the team yet. It was but but on the flyer when Primo made a flyer for <laughs> this is this is fucked up because this is how I got the name JTMR. I was going to ask you that because yeah. well, I was right. going there right. because. <laughs> Cause I, right. it's like and this is what I was like what? Cause I was already I was like like thirteen fourteen, but I don't know. Primo <laughs> was like small. And he was like you skate like a man, you know. Whatever. Okay, so then the next thing I know, I get picked for the team, and he makes these flyers, and it says Matt Hensley, Danny Way, and those were the guys that were factory sponsored by Vision at okay. that time. Yeah, they were fat. They were on full. Like they got sent yeah, to contests. The they got paid for the contests. They got hotels and all that shit. Whatever you get when you travel. I was getting flow. So, I, but it was like it was Matt Hensley, Danny Way, John Reeves, and this other guy. Um, I think his name is Gabe Jacks. Gabe Jackson. I think his name was. <laughs> but anyway, it was dope, man. And that was the That's real funny. taste yeah, of. Name. Of and then he put oh it's John the Marys <laughs> on the flyer and that's oh, really? when and that's when and before that I ca- that probably happened it seemed like a long time before Hocus Pocus happened yeah before H Street happened but it was actually probably only like a half a year or okay. a year later it felt like that forever that, back then yeah but when yeah. you're a kid <laughs> yeah so it's like it, it it's like when I look back it probably wasn't that that um yeah, much that time far. yeah that much time but um <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. So basically then, that was that flyer. That was the evidence that it was JTMR right yeah. there. So um, <laughs> Donger, back, cut to Key and Lou, my partner in crime. Yeah. Everybody, we skated together. Like, he would he he would ollie anything. But anyways, and I would ollie, yeah. try to ollie whatever's ollie. I actually had a cassette tape. I forgot what <laughs> video, but he was one of the first people I saw skating. Key and yeah. Lou and like yeah. massive ollies. Yeah. yeah, so we he ended up getting transferred to school where in our neighborhood and we all went to the same high school which is Mary Mesa High okay and um we used to go there and then we would after school we would skate every day and Don would he would watch Hocus Pocus ah no <laughs> Shackle Me Not Shackle Me Not all right <laughs> Shackle Me Not the first HE video every day and he's like damn this is so dope I'm gonna get on that team I'm gonna get on that team and by that time I had already left Primo and I was um, riding for Dave Crab, who's a dope New Zealander who was the team manager and pro for Toxic Skateboards. Okay. So I got on Toxic for a little bit. So I was getting boards sent from the East Coast to my house. Toxic really? wheels and Toxic. And then I, I, it was funny. Back then I liked the graphics. So they were like all like slime ball-ish, like, you know, like uh, the Santa Cruz graphic guy. He does the ill shit. Um, but yeah. it was all like gory and... And cool graphics, but um, 
See what happened next. So I got, and and they were sending boxes to my house. So it was like they would send it from the East Coast. So it was like the first packages. How did they find out about you? From Dave Crab, because Dave Crab lived in a. Oh, get this! This is a whole (laughs) other level of that. It's like, oh my god. Um, There's a whole another another level. It was Alan Losey. Okay. And Dave Crab. Alan Losey. Guy... I don't know who that is. Sorry to interrupt. Did he invent the Losey grind? Yes, is that? Lo- that's... Come on. Okay. You gotta learn I... your history chat. <laughs> Tell you about. Uh, ask Losey on Instagram. Anyways. Okay. Alan Losey, the Losey grind, the Losey disaster, disaster yeah. whatever. That he lived in the house with Reese Simpson and Dave Crab and this guy Jim Wolverton. Okay. And they were like had this house and they were just they were like. It was so crazy that that even existed. I still think back to this day that 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 existed. Like it would be in between me skating from my 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 where I grew up to my friend's house on the other side of the town that I lived in. Okay. So we would uh, we would see them at the mall doing slappies and doing all like it was crazy. So <laughs> they had this house and like yeah, and there was a skate house back then in the eighties and it was like um, that's how I don't know how Dave Crab how I immediately. Uh, met him or how he saw me skate. Okay, but somehow just heard that happened. Her, yeah. and then the I neighborhood spon- or something. And he yeah. wanted to sponsor me, so that damn and that happened. And then that only lasted for a year because after Donger back to Key and Lou, yeah, watching uh, Shackle Me Not every day and <laughs> wanting to be on H Street, yeah. Um, he, he got on like he got on, and next thing I know, we're at School <laughs> W. Skating the flat bar and uh, Mike Ternaski's there and other probably other H Street guys that I didn't know at the time yeah. were there. So and um, and Donger, I think it was already on. Like he was riding H Street stuff, and I was probably still on Toxic. And then they were just like, "You should just ride for H Street instead." And I was like, "All right." Okay. Then that's what's <laughs> what I'm supposed to do. That's and it was Damn. good. And yeah. I wanted to do it too, but I wasn't driven by that i didn't yeah. think of it as in as like something to get or like how now you know what you can get out of of, of being sponsored or being on the right team or having the right sponsors for okay so you didn't even people. think on those terms yeah you there was just no like, oh, my terms like, yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, let's go yeah. let's go <laughs> let's go skate and then and, and you're gonna film and you got Dan Sturt with a with a video camera and Mike McIntyre who films all these snowboard yeah. videos that I didn't even know about at that point and like right filming in your area us too. and we just start busting out yeah and we just like <laughs> oh you busted it oh you busted that's what it was like um, so you said it was Danny Way was a Key and Lou for what. Are you for, talking about the vision thing, or are you talking about no, for? You said, oh, on the on the team for Eighth Street. You're saying, oh, that that time there was a huge team. For oh, okay, Hocus that's Pocus. A, oh, okay. There's a they had. I mean, they had all the guys from the original Shackle Me Not video, like Ron Allen and and I mean, there's so many. You gotta watch yeah, the, Ray Simmons. Yeah. You never seen Ray Simmons, the guy who does the big chicken wing pop tart tuck knees <laughs> over the ladder. I'm no, sorry, no, you're good. <laughs> over yeah. the ladder. Off the launch ramp? No. You got to watch Shackle Me Not, man. All right. Because this is... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you do some homework, man. He can't yep. be doing a podcast if he doesn't know these guys' names. Yeah, you got to make sure you <laughs> keep it in the mic. He can't do a podcast because <laughs> he needs to know these guys' names. That's true. I, am, I need to be educated look, on it's that. It's all good, though. It's all good. I mean, but yeah, that's why I'm here. That's true. Ray Simmons, You're educating me right now. Ray Simmons. All right. Ray Simmons. <laughs> and then Jeff Pettit. Um, you got to watch Shackle Me Not. Okay. And so, then yeah, so, on, so all those guys were yeah. on the team. And then there's a then introduce Mike Carroll and Greg Carroll and the whole SF Embargadero chapter of H Street. Okay. And that's like, you know, all that time. And that became Javante and Javante mm. Turner and like everybody like from – from up there, my friend Dan Paterka, that blue door is like, yeah, doing the best shit like on the skateboard and like costing coming down. And then the A Street house, we had a house in Scripps Ranch that was a mile away from School W with the bank, the bank to the fence and the yeah. and the flat bar. And mm-hmm. it was that was our training grounds, man. Damn. And what year is this all going this down? This is like in between 88 to 1991. 
Damn. When the Soldier Story came out, when yeah. the live video came. And was out. that your first, like the first big my first video part my or? first big video part was in Hocus Pocus, which is 1989. Okay. And then the Soldier Story came out after that. And how was it filming for Hocus Pocus? Like, was that were you guys like trying to film a video? Or was it more we, just like skating? We no, we footage? knew we were yeah. filming. Yeah. We knew what well, we knew we were filming, but you can't. There's no, you can't see what you landed. You can't go, oh, <laughs> let me try that again. You can't say, oh, my foot was off. I want to make it look more perfect. It was just like, oh, I made it. Let's do it. He landed. Yeah. Okay, good. Move on. And then you don't have any control over do what you... they use either. There's so many th- yeah. clips that we've, and I'm sure that everybody who filmed with those guys back then and, yeah. and skated, have they did like hundreds of things that didn't even make it into the video that would be dope to see today. Yeah. Because, but That's that was funny, their yeah. their job to to edit yeah. it, and they didn't ask us what song we wanted. That's Come on, funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they, yeah. They I guess it was it. almost like people might have been more present then, because you didn't have like more like as much control or like to redo things. You're kind of just like it is what yeah, it is. We're moving yeah. on, and it's fun. Like, it's just happening. You're just whatever. write it as right. it goes. Right. <laughs> it's not like oh, I'm gonna do it. I've got to get it perfect. Like what? How I saw it. Yeah. There's no seeing it. There's no seeing there it. There's seeing some of the things. Like that's why yeah. I always give props to like Nadas and Gons and Tommy Guerrero, Tony Alva and Hasoy and Caballero and all those dudes, Hawk that Lance Mountain, Neil Blinder, all those guys that did all these things super dope. Yeah. Without even even less of a recognition than we had when we started to do it and le- not being able to see what they were doing just f- pure you know creativity yeah, yeah that's wild <laughs> you know and it's yeah. like then like if they want to do something like a bone up or whatever a, a woolly mammoth i mean what the fuck's yeah. a woolly mammoth <laughs> that's something that Neil blender or lance yeah. made up I, like i'm not even sure but it's amazing that you know all these little Little things happen from one movement can turn to another big movement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what was it like skating with just, I don't know, people like that are the best in the world pretty much at that time? <laughs> you know I mean, did you feel yourself getting like it much better or like pushing yourself well, you, more? Well, it's or always like, you know? good when you skate with other people. Yeah. That it always pushes you to get better because you can't, you know... You can't stagnate and when you see something you're like oh that's that was sick or uh, you can add your flavor to it or you can do it a little bit different way or you're like you know so it's always good to skate with people that are better than you or people that can motivate you to try something different right yeah no definitely yeah like what how'd you do chad's caruso's lunch vessel <laughs> Jay Russo's lunch special, everybody. Did you see that post on Instagram the other day? Yeah, I don't know. I, don't I even honestly don't even know how that came into my head. I don't even know what the board did. I don't even either. I can't even word it. But... <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's the beauty of skateboarding because it's yeah. always, you know, evolving. It's true. So, so what's next in the timeline of John the Man Reeves? So you're hitting, <laughs> was it? What was that next video that you were in after? Oh, okay. All yeah. Right. Oh. Hmm. So it was Hocus Pocus. So yeah. that was the first video that I was ever in that was like an international, internationally seen film. And was that expected to be like internationally seen, or no, was I it didn't, just like who knew? Like, like by the people running the company, maybe you know, where they like we were so young at that point yeah. that we weren't part of those. We weren't privy to those conversations. We, we didn't know what they expected or how many shops were forecasted to yeah. to pick the yeah, that's the, not the VHS your realm. tape up or what how many copies they're gonna make. Yeah, it was just like we had a premiere in a movie theater. Yeah, we get our free product. We got paid a little bit of money as amateurs. And then we get, you know, we get and we're the people- premiere and you get the VHS copies when it's done. Yeah. You don't you don't know how many they printed or how many. And were people recognizing you after that? Like in the skate community and stuff like that? I'm, in, yeah. Oh, in San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. But not certain. Like it's still, it's still, it's still a microcosm of everything. It's not a, um, one of the biggest things that, that people talk about. But you know, yeah, yeah, and and that area was, people knew. Yeah, it's just sure. like anywhere, you know. And then you go on tour, and then people start to know more, you know. So yeah, how were those tours? Did you guys yeah. t- tour for that? 
Um, like, not for Hocus Pocus. Yeah. I didn't. I only the first thing they they sent me to this place after Hocus Pocus was a demo in Nashville where I got to uh, go there and skate, and it was. They, 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 I remember, <laughs> I remember I stayed at the shop owner's house and they picked me up and they took me to the Cracker Barrel restaurant <laughs> in Nashville. And I probably had chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes or something. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It was delicious. Yeah. But, um, then I went to their skate park and skated and then they yeah. flew me home. Just first you? time I, fl- yeah. But I really? met like, I think Alf might have been there, Alfonso Rawls. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> I think, I, I don't know. It was, it was, it was a random one or maybe like there was, Maybe Danny. I think Danny Way was at that one. Really? Yeah, because there was a vert thing. And then they had like a street course and they had me come out too. Damn. Back then, yeah. So it's funny. You're probably first loving it. Place first I ever somewhere. got. Yeah. We were like 15 uh, yeah. at that time or something like that. 16. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, because that was before the life video, I think. And the life video, I was 17 when that came out because I turned pro when I was 17. Yeah. Sorry. And that came out in 1991. So don't Hocus crucify Pocus, me. I don't know what Hocus the life Pocus, video is. Hocus Pocus <laughs> came out. Okay. What came out before Hocus Pocus? Shock and we not. Okay, good. All right, I know that much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what came out after Hocus Pocus? Um, you just said it. That... You just said it. All life? right, the life video. Life. Oh, okay. That's 91. That so it okay. was two years. And um, and you had a full part in that too? Well, it was, it was a shared part. Well, the... Both of those video parts, but we all had, we had, I had parts throughout, like in Hocus Pocus, we had a one part was me and Key and Lou. Okay. And then it went to um, just other clips. So we, we both had clips in Matt Hensley's part towards the end of the video because Matt Hensley had the last part. Okay. But it was like, kind of like, there would always be one guy kind of highlighted besides, besides our part was like two guys highlighted at once, but the other ones was like. One guy highlighted, and then other team writers would be sprinkled in there, which is kind okay. of a cool, yeah, cool, cool mix, uh, yeah. way to do video, you know, and do uh, do that. So you can, you can, yeah, hi- you can highlight everybody, and get everyone gets clips. Yeah, but, uh, that's how it is now. It's like I'm tripping when I watch the new videos on Thrasher because they don't even put people's names on the screen. No, it's just like people. Are re- well, sometimes, but <laughs> I mean, I don't you, honestly sometimes watch too much. Sometimes yeah. it's like. Who am I? What? That was sick. Who is that guy? I don't, I don't know. It was like so many good skateboarders. So yeah, but it's like 1991, Hocus Pocus. Okay. I mean, 89 Hocus Pocus. <laughs> now I'm getting confused. 91 Soldier Story. And if okay. you don't know the live video of Soldier Story, then you don't know Sean Sheffy. I know Sean Sheffy. <laughs> Yeah, but I you just don't haven't know, seen the, you don't know the I don't Sheffy. know much about he like, had his impact. Part, maybe. He had the ender part in that video where he just, he was like, okay. <laughs> the good yeah, and bad and ugly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so, and then Kit Erickson, RIP Kit, homie up there, you know. Okay. Kit Erickson. He was killing it. Uh, we had Noah Selaznick. We had Dave Donaldson. Yeah, so you Jesse are... Newhouse, Ron Allen. So I feel like when the live video came out, A Soldier Story, it was 91. It was right before Mike. Mike, I think Mike was planning on, Mike Ternaski was planning on leaving H Street okay. from, from Tony Magnuson, which was which is the main pro who he started H Street Skateboards with. Oh, okay. If you watch some old Vert contests, you'll see T-Mag like, killing it. Like he was really? a great vert skater, you know. But he, you know, and then he started H Street, like which which was the opposite of what he did. But they saw what the future was gonna be. Yeah. Like I don't know who I think Mike T was like that because he was the team manager that was like getting all the street kids to be on his team and put out okay. a video at that point. Mm. So it's like, I think that when he did the live video, he was. Doing an experiment for what later became oh, Plan B, yeah. What so later became Plan B skateboards. Interesting. Yeah, that's funny. So, and yeah. that's you know you know about Plan B. I'm sure you've seen. Yeah, every that's plan B yeah, video. that's more um, when you when started I was, when you were young right. and started. Yeah, I mean I was still kind of before. Yeah, when I started. 
I right. remember what videos were coming out when I started. <laughs> it's probably like 2002 ish well, or something this, like and that. And this is but, the thing. Now there's yeah. a new video every day because it's it's digital to the internet. Yeah. Then we waited a year for the VHS tape. Yeah. We waited for the magazine to see a new thing. Yeah. We didn't have instant free advertisement on Instagram. So yeah, it's like for now, that VHS you, to come around. Yeah, it's like you <laughs> wait, and it and it made it more, and honestly, it made it more special. Yeah, and it made it more you know like. Everybody was anticipating the next cool thing that was going to be, and right. now it's just saturated. Yeah, yeah. You need something to not be there to appreciate <laughs> it. You know what I mean? And I feel like in, in New York, it's that's like light. we have the winter. You know what I mean? Oh and, yeah. And then, like, so then you, yeah. so that makes you hungrier. Yeah. Once it comes out, and that, that, it's oh, like, ah, wow. oh, I gotta go skate. That, You're like that makes sense. Up, you know you. That makes sense yeah. because I never thought I would live in New York. I love coming here. <laughs> To visit and I thought and you were born tours. here. No, I man. didn't even know that. No, yeah, uh-uh. <laughs> but um, I was born on the on the East Coast. Oh, I really? was born in West Virginia. I knew it. But two years old, <laughs> two years old, I moved to San Diego. Okay, but so I don't really know the young life of being on the East Coast because I was already two by the time. Yeah, we only only two when we moved to San Diego. But the thing about the East Coast is that when you mention the winter. The ground is rougher. The spots are oh, grittier. Yeah. You have to want it to become, you know, a street skater. Yeah. You have to go, like, <laughs> it's brutal. on the train and wait. Those and slams in the winter when it's, like, like 30 the, degrees. Yeah, you just shatter. <laughs> yeah. You just shatter. Like, slap the cold off concrete. Uh, no. I, yeah. I mean, I respect that. And it's, like, that's way different than growing up with like good sidewalks. I'm not saying the California sidewalks are paid with gold, but they're pretty smooth. <laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> pretty smooth compared to out here. Yeah. And yeah, all those I love California and I always will too. And it's just and but I never thought I'd live here. Mm. It just ha- it just happened to to be yeah. this long. And it, the cool thing about doing that is it's I ca- I constantly feel like I'm on the, like a tour. What, like, living in New York? Yeah, it's like you can go to any bur- <laughs> borough and be in a different country. Or you could That's like, true, you, yeah. It's like if you don't stagnate and you do stuff, it's like you can be in. Yeah, it's, and it's you so hear diverse. people speaking yeah. different languages. You're like, okay, over here, this food, over here, that food. Over, it's like yeah. little microcosms different of the world. Of, yeah. yeah, the world. So it's like constantly being on the go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, Damn. Yeah. So when when did you move to New York? When was that? Two thousand five. So in between that time, after the life video, yeah, we did a company called Fun Skateboards, which was out of Deluxe. Shout like you out! You were a part of it. Shout out of shout out to Deluxe right now to uh, Frank Gurer <laughs> and Jim Thebo. Thank you guys so much. It's hooking me up lately. I love you guys. Um. Uh. Yeah. By but by, by that was like. By that time, it was um, like, were fun skateboards. Yeah, fun. Yeah. Fun. So you were. <laughs> so fun was out of the luck. So I got, yeah. I got. Were you part of that? Yeah, like, that was. Like me, you were an owner Jesse, or a, or what? I didn't get an owner because Ron was the figurehead, the main pro from Life. Okay. We turned that company into Deluxe or into Fun. Yeah. It was distributed from Deluxe. Oh. Okay. And this is like ninety three. When did Deluxe come on? Ninety three. Deluxe so was seen. that's real skateboards was starting. They had the whole distribution. This guy named Jeff Clint, another guy, RIP. Jeff Clint was one of the main dudes at Deluxe, but he was part of H Street at the beginning too. Oh, really? But then okay. he got with like I don't know, I don't know how all that stuff happened, but I yeah. feel like it was all affiliated with Thrasher and Fausto and and Thunder and and all the great companies from San Francisco, Spitfire. Yeah. Um, and G- G- Tommy Guerrero had a company called Forties, which was like clothing company, like. Zip, zip, Ben Davis style. Okay. And work pants back Damn. then. It was dope. Um, then, you know, there's guys like Salman Aga and James Kelch and the the OGs of the real team that were the, that were around. But light or life that turned into fun was Keith Huff was on that team. Oh, really? And Keenan Milton. Really? Yeah. Did before, not know that. Really? Before. Yeah. Those Because those guys were on flow for life skateboards. Oh, okay. Out here, because Mike Ternaski originally found Huff and and Keith. Uh, I mean, Keith Keenan. and Keith yeah, and Keenan. Yeah. <laughs> Huff and Keith. <laughs> Huff yeah. and Keenan. Yeah. yeah, no, so 
those guys are amazing. But like they skated, they killed it, and they were for a moment part of uh, Fun Skateboards with Ron Allen and Jesse Newhouse and you and me. How long was that for? About. I mean, I know he did a, a video in 93, and they kept it going because guys like Eric Pupecki got on that team. Pupecki? Yeah, yeah, before Minnes, I think. He must have been before, pretty young at that time. Yeah, right? there was, really, yeah other, like, there's a, a lot. Yeah. Like, Ron Ron had mentored and gave boards to a lot of sick-ass skateboarders back then. So, But the thing for me, it ended sooner than them because – they went on tour together, and I went back to San Diego. And when I wasn't in Sa- and I wasn't in San Francisco, I didn't have any, uh, I didn't have that much um, say or what was going on in the company. And I wasn't, I was too young to feel really like yeah. communicate that at that point and know yeah. what was going we even on. Even think that yeah. way. Yeah. So so we went. I went back to San Diego to my parents' house. Okay. And um, ended up not getting boards, and it got hard to get boards. I would call, and then was like, all right, I'm not. And then I met up with uh, Laban and Dave Bergthal, Laban Fidius and Dave Bergthal, okay. and we started Invisible Skateboards. And Invisible okay. had three, we had, wait, three, at least three good videos. And what yeah. year was, when did that start, Invisible? Uh, that was, that's 93, 94. It's like all that, it's oh, like things it was, happen was like, really yeah. fast. <laughs> like, now that I look at it, it's like, what? <laughs> It seems like there's space in like space yeah. in between it, but it just went back to so back. Back so to back, one thing. Like the first, because we were on tour. I have a VHS tape that says Invisible Tour 94. And I think Memoirs of the Invisible Team, that video came out in uh, 93. So it was like 93. I was in San Francisco. I guess it was the beginning of the year. And then I came back. And by that summer, we were already doing Invisible. Something okay. like that. And you were know? you, so were you an owner? Were you professional? <laughs> I amateur? was a professional on the team, yeah. yeah. I was the first board. Really? The board out, and uh, we had, had Video Park, you know. Damn. Full, you know, full um, contract and all that stuff. You know, where you get you get paid monthly and all I that stuff. I never knew that. Yeah, you get paid. You get paid <laughs> monthly. You yeah. usually, back then it was, you get a minimum. Okay. And, your they they cut a, a certain amount of your pro models with your name on it. Oh, okay. Okay. So if you sell over that minimum, then you get the royalties over. Oh, and okay. that was the crazy part that you never know really knew if you were selling over that unless you <laughs> yeah, like, were like a like, oh, really stickler <laughs> and you're like in the office going, yeah, hey, hey board. what did you what did I <laughs> like I was like I was like all right, yeah. I got my minute was go skate. I'm Honor just system. listening. Like Who knows? Go- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> honor system. I mean, but that, yeah, it's like was- it's, it might be dumb, but I wasn't a businessman, and I'm not still not a businessman. Yeah, but back then it's like. Yeah, you're probably psyched you know, just to be getting anything, being yeah, a pro, it's and like, great. yeah, like you, you, you know, and that's how you get a. That's how that's how a lot of a lot of skateboarders in the industry got burnt out and didn't want to do it for and keep it going for a job because they didn't know what were they or they never really got anything or they just got they're killing themselves trying all these naughty tricks yeah. and only getting boards, yeah, you know? so little, and or the the next kid will come back and get. Do something gnarlier, yeah, and he'll they'll just give him boards. So they're like, all right, I don't have to give you money anymore. This guy's doing this for yeah. that, which is but. And now it's now it's that's why it's driven to where it's been, yeah, like the marketing, the, the and marketing, stuff like that, and all and yeah, it's brands be that. and things, brands, more. other brands, not even skate wise, yeah, yeah, like the corporate thing that came in, yeah, from Toyota trucks to Red Bull. Or whatever sponsors there are. Yeah. I'm not down talking any of them because it's no, a business. No, because as you just said, like business. the people had to leave skateboarding. Yeah. Because they weren't making money. Right. Now people have a chance to make exactly. money. Exactly. And people right. know that. Uh, and it's gonna be yeah. in the Olympics. And yeah. you, you either like it or you don't. But I don't I don't dislike it. I think it's great. Whatever. That yeah. The, it it's used just, to be our thing, like, ah, oh, we are my <laughs> precious, like, fuck, I just said like that. Um, they're like, I can't, you know, this, this is my skate. I'm a skateboarder. <laughs> fuck them, you know. No, I can. I said it's everybody's something very everybody's. similar. Like recently, it was, uh, yeah, like we just hold on to it, like yeah. it's our little thing. Like yeah. we don't want it to grow and be like yeah. shared with everyone, right? <laughs> no, you can't. I've already, I already gave, I already like gave into that part of it. Yeah, because it's, it's. And it's and it's something that 
you should not have to give in to. <laughs> right. It's crazy. I know. It's like, but, but I know. It's, it's like, unbelievable because that's like, like one of the main things that helped me back when I was younger. It was like caring about that type of stuff. And, yeah. You know, and then once I got injured and took some time off of skating, you know, for like a year or two and I came back, I looked at it completely differently. You know, I didn't like think about all those same things right just go out and do my tricks i wasn't yeah. watching the videos i right. wasn't like i was completely yeah. free of that whole like world exactly and then I was, you know now i look at it so differently but when you're young it's like yeah you know the yeah. end of the world if like a sponsor <laughs> came in or something you're like right. no yeah it's, it's <laughs> insane i mean and, and, and now that's how i can do what i do now though as well because yeah. i wouldn't be able to do what i do now if it didn't become a, a a thing where people wanted you out. Like everyone wanted to kick us out of everywhere. Everyone yeah. like they still skate proof everything, and, but they before is like you're outcast if you're a skateboarder. You're not cool. Oh, yeah. Now the coolest dudes in the high school <laughs> are the skateboarders. Oh yeah, and definitely. The parents know that, and the parents are like willing to let their kids they want the kids to be into something yeah they want them to love something and become passionate about right. anything in life like whether it's uh yeah our uh, sport anything that they can do that's what the parents really want so they don't mind it being skateboarding right especially when it has the olympic tag on yeah. it and it's like oh yeah <laughs> so he's I, training to be an olympic athlete exactly yeah Dude, before that it's just like he's vandalizing like my the property parents were like what the fuck you mean you pro <laughs> what are you what you're pro what? what does that even mean That's you know funny. they're like oh and then i started getting checks and traveling and having a board with my name on it yeah. and then they understand so on invisible what was that like 94 ish 95 yeah. right and so you, you said some people you know, you weren't making that much. Like, were you doing okay? Like, were you ever like, oh, I don't know if I could keep I, skating, you know, or no, like, I, you know, I, I, I didn't like, have. Yeah. I had my own apartment. I was paying my rent. I did. I, yeah, I didn't have anything. So you were comfortable. Yeah, like you could keep yeah. skating, and I could keep. Yeah, I could keep keep skating. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, that was that was great. I mean, and what? But what I'm what what I meant before is that. Everyone didn't get to that 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 oh, point. Get to no that matter, level. right? No matter okay. how good they were, they're still good. It just maybe it didn't click. I yeah. don't know. It's just weird. It's like that's yeah. one thing that you don't know, and and that's what I meant by um, back then. A lot of people having they get big, they get they get clout, they get big names, they get um, yeah stuff, and then maybe it lasts. Six months, maybe it lasts yeah. three weeks. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? You know, it's like you, now right. it's like you you're hot one day and then you don't even know where the, the there's always a new video with a new yeah hot shit. Yeah, there. something's always changing. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's but that's good because that just shows that the yeah. diversity and how you know how yeah. awesome it is and if it, and if you can everyone can find their own little way to make a living at it now if they really want to for sure. Definitely. That's the thing. That's yeah. the thing. Before I got in, like right at that different. point when that didn't exist, you know, like when I started skating again, I was like twenty seven or eight, and YouTube and all this stuff and What's the internet yeah. was really exploding. Yeah, and so now it's it's very possible. You know, it's almost practical to be able to do it. <laughs> yeah. But before that, it was like, you know, throwing my life away, not right. going to college right. or something yeah. like okay. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but think about that. If you think about that way, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> call it like there's so many people with co they went to college that are in massive debt right now. Massive they debt. want they can't, and then they get a job, but it doesn't even pay enough to pay the debt back. Right, and, and a it, lot of times they don't get into the field that they wanted well, to get exactly. into, or you get older, and what you went to school for when you were 18 isn't like who you've become when you're 23 and then you're like wait i don't want to do that i'm yeah. not into that yeah you know what i mean totally it's 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 insane i was watch this documentary last night or it's like a docu-series okay on About hbo what? defiant ones all right it's called defiant ones it was it was dr dre and jimmy jimmy iovine this guy from red hook brooklyn that is now like one of the major um music producers of all time and he got beats by dre the headphones sold to mac oh, damn. but it's like okay. how much hustle that they did and and they now they're the fact this is relates back to the uh 
college discussion yeah. discussion we were just having. Yeah. Um, they're never both of them. I, maybe Jimmy Ivey went to college, but I don't think no. I don't even think he did because no. he just he was an engineer for like Patty Smith and Bruce Springsteen and everybody. All these awesome. 70s and, and and early 80s rock acts um uh Stevie Nicks Damn. uh Tom Petty Really? Yeah, like he Jeez. did help work with all these people John Lennon but now <laughs> he's working with Dr. Dre but the okay. the whole the whole thing is that he is getting a school for music and art or whatever and 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 audio I guess degrees at USC they're building a chapter of part of their college in his name and he's never <laughs> he's even, never even went to college yeah <laughs> so that's it's like there yeah. you go it's exactly like exactly right it's it's you get out of life what you really put into it you know and it's like yeah i agree with that completely and, and if you know and because I, I try yeah. you know it's hard but yeah you get you keep going and then there's stuff that you want to do and you're always in the back of your mind and you you know it's like Am I gonna get to that? Like you know, yeah. So I think I say you sit back and enjoy the ride and do what you can. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Exactly. So it's like um, that same thing. It's like you don't know what's what 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 what. We can go back to the first question or one yeah. of the questions you asked me about success. You don't know as long yeah, as you, you go know. with that. And then people That's think because it'll go thing, up and down. Like right. what? But if you're just following what's true to you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Where the wave <laughs> right, is going, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And um, the thing about the the uh, documentary, uh, this guy staying on the path, he said something about, you notice why they put uh, blinders on racehorses? Why they that? put blinders on them so they don't look to the side, so you can't see what anybody else is doing. <laughs> so you just stay on you your stay path focused. and you just keep going and then yes. good stuff will happen. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> I didn't realize that till I got older. <laughs> Like you, you don't realize why things happen, and like I don't know. For me, as I got older, I realized it's just simply work and focus. Right. Like if you just yeah. keep working at something, it'll continue to rise up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. But man. yeah, <laughs> did not know that when I was young, though. For sure. <laughs> I was just all over the place. You know? Right. Yeah. Just I still kind of am actually. Spontaneous. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be spontaneous. Yeah. Damn. All right. So, invisible. You're riding for them. Yeah. It's like three and years. That was great. Sure? That was a great time. We went, traveled a lot, went to Australia, went all over Europe. How was um, Australia? I've always wanted to go there. Australia is amazing. Yeah? Yeah. It's one of the, my favorite places to go. To. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't, it's, it's hot. It was okay. really hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember being in a van sweating and pouring beer all over myself. <laughs> But um, yeah, Damn. seeing we went to like a zoo and really saw wombats and koalas and so it's like must skated. Have been a we went big... fishing on a boat. Oh, that I went there with Dynasty skateboards too. That's later, but okay, we went on a fishing boat. Um, but we got to do things in between just skating. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So and then Visible Damn. Tour was cool though too because um, we were there with Alien Workshop. So there were some dudes like Matt. Well, Matt Mumford was on Invisible at the time, who's from Australia, and um, Morgan Campbell. And then there was uh, dudes like Josh Kalis from uh, Alien was there with us on tour that time. Fred Gall. Really? Which is amazing. That yeah. sounds like a wild <laughs> toy, yeah. Yeah, there's an actual a 411 video magazine. Really? There's a video piece of that, of our mm, Australian Do you trip. know a number off the top of your head or not? <sighs> No, that's too much. <laughs> I don't know the number. Damn. But so Life Skateboards must have been like done well. I never heard of them. So yeah. they must have been a pretty big company. Well, life going was, on big life tours was like basically that off of H Street. But this, but we were in Invisible oh, okay. this time. Oh, that was That was after. Invisible. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking right. about, we're talking about 94, 95. Right, sorry, life I mixed was, up the words. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Invisible was, the names. was, it was distributed out of Oceanside. At the time, all my sponsors were up there. Tracker trucks. Um, besides, I had uh, they had another company that was sponsoring me. It was uh, Direction Wheels, which is out of NHS. Okay. Shout out to the OG Jeff Kendall. <laughs> who I think he's like the president or vice president of Santa Cruz NHS now. That's, really? That's who distributes like 
Creature, Santa Cruz, Crux, Independent, Speed Wheels, NorCal. Like, it's ill. It's like, it's okay. ill. Like, they're ill. Um, but, yeah, Jeff Kendall. So, and I, and that was cool. That was a team that I was on with Mark Johnson, which is a super awesome skateboarder. And Jason hey, Carney. Mark Johnson was on? He was on really? Direction Wheels. It was oh, called Direction, Direction okay. Wheels. This is my <laughs> other sponsor besides, yeah. besides, Tracker in and uh, invisible at that time, mm. and then there was Airwalk and Dragon Optical, and th- these were all Damn. in Southern California. Like it, you could drive, I could, I would just drive up at least like once a month and go hit all my sponsors. Oh, okay, so they're like kind of in the same yeah. area. Yeah. So like, if you get on it's one, still, it's likely you there. might like be like. Well, it, well, you know, it like depends on who you're skating you know I mean? with and yeah. who's seeing you and. How much back then it depended on how much coverage coverage yeah. you were getting in the magazine. If you were getting ads, if people saw you, you know, the then East they Coast, would. If someone saw you in one ad, they might want to put you in their another ad. Or yeah, you know, it's like the like East that. Coast felt like the opposite of that. When I started, it was like the whole world was in California, and you well, got to get to California. Well, like yeah, you're not going to see a company <laughs> and like you know maybe you would see one in the well, city that, or something that, but, but they yeah. already had the ones that were here then yeah. was just zoo right yeah. and and five borough maybe you know? maybe okay. i mean when i was young yeah yeah was, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure yeah <laughs> so so you guys were doing pretty well and then where did they go from there like you guys oh, were touring so, and stuff well, like that and, uh, we did all that and yeah. we had a great team we put out like three videos we put out um Memoirs of the Invisible Team, which was the first one, 93. You could see that on YouTube. Um, okay. There's, I have to check that out. Um, Vanishing Point, which I named. And I'm stoked that I got to name that video because um, I, I, it was invisible. But I didn't. I knew that there was a movie called Vanishing Point at the okay. time. I'm like, we should just call it <laughs> Vanishing Point. That's a tight yeah. name. Um, but I hadn't seen the movie Vanishing Point yet. Oh, Steve you just McCreen, came up with it. And it Steve was, McCreen yeah. drives around in like a Dodge Challenger. It's an mm. ill movie. I, I knew the title of the movie, oh, but, but I hadn't, hadn't seen, seen the okay. movie yet. Okay. So, but I wanted to call our video, <laughs> video that. And Dave Bergthold's so cool. He was the team manager at the time, yeah. founder of Blockhead Skateboards um, and Invisible Skateboards. And he was like, all right, let's call it that. So that was the second video. Okay. And then um, we did the tour video. And that came out in like 97, I think. And then Laban Fidias had his videos of the juggling and skateboarding, which is pretty funny. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Yeah, I got a video. It's caught clean too. So if you if you Google John Reeves caught clean too, okay, you'll see my part in in that video. It's like all right, made by Laban, and I do frontside nose grind on Hubba Hideout. Really? And yeah, and kickflip <laughs> frontside three sixty before I ever saw anybody do it. Wait. Like an El Nino. Frontside 360 kick Ollie kickflip. Kickflip first, catch 180 and turn the rest of the Really? Yeah. On like a hip or something? Or? Off of a wedge ramp. Damn. <laughs> Damn, that's tough, man. Yeah. So wait, all right, so where are we at? So that oh, was- so yeah, you're doing- That um, was in the three invisible videos. And yeah. then, so you were kind of inquiring how- Yeah. The, what happened to that, yeah. why that company doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. Um. um <laughs> I think that I don't know if I don't know. I mean, that's it's I don't know how it was doing at the point where I got to another offer with to ride with my longtime friend Kian Lou for Dynasty Skateboards. So oh, really? and they were gonna give okay. me more money and they were gonna, you know, I thought at that point I thought it was gonna be I wanted to be, do a company with him too. Yeah. You know, so it was like, why not? And I tried to negotiate, you know, I, I tried to be a businessman. I was like, I want this, but if you guys want me to stay. And yeah. they didn't want to give me that amount. Yeah. And so left. I left. But, they, so, you know, Dave off, Dave was cool. He offered me a wheel and royalties off the wheel if I could stay. But I was like, I already got a wheel sponsor yeah. now at that point. Yeah, and and plus, I had my own wheel. Yeah. And I was getting paid, I think, at that point from. But he's like, you can do a wheel deal or something like that. So who and, else was on Dynasty at that time? Uh, Vinny Ponte, uh, Spencer Fujimoto, Satva Lung, this guy Steve Nardone from Boston. Okay, I've heard of him. Yeah. yeah um, we Damn. had yeah, it was a cool team, and that but that lasted very shortly too. It was a short. Oh yeah, it was like three, maybe four years, I think, maybe. Okay. 
It's not too short. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, but yeah. Yeah. So what year are we at after that ends, <laughs> Dynasty? I can't even. That, yeah, that's. Hmm. Getting tough. Well, like. 90. 2002. Oh, 2002. Yeah, we're, we're in, in the, the 2000s. 2000s. I'm we're skating in the, now. We're in the 2000s. <laughs> I'm like, skating. What year did you start skating? I don't know. I think maybe like 2002. <laughs> um, I've been skating for like 16 years. So okay, it's 2000. Yeah, like 2002, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Roughly. Okay. So yeah, I'm just when we went on to the Australia <laughs> with Vinny and me and Kian and. Uh, the one it was one fifty one because it was just dis- distributed from um, this company that di- also had Maple skateboards and one fifty one skateboards, which okay. was Neil Headings and Pigpin and Darren Navarrete, I think at the time. Um, but anyways, we went on tour with them two thousand one to Australia. Okay, so that's how I know specifically that that company was alive. Yeah, because <laughs> I remember two thousand one yeah, going tour. there. And I had a I had a tweaked ankle, but I still went, and I didn't skate as hard as I wish I would have now. Mm. But whatever, I had fun. I yeah, was like you got to go drinking Mad VB. They, the beer they don't drink like they have this beer called Victoria Bitter. Okay, never and heard I of it. I bought a whole. I, I got my own. I got my own Esky, mate. <laughs> I got my own Esky, mate. And I had my own cooler in the in the van, so I could just drink my beers while I was in the back on the way to the next demo. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I was wild and that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one where Neil Headings goes into the airport and we're picking these guys up and he's out completely butt naked running around in the, at the airport. <laughs> at the airport <laughs> saying, rock out with your cock out. Rock out with your cock out. No. Yeah, he's a, he's a <laughs> madman. Gigi Allen style. That's awesome. <laughs> Damn. All right, so then Dynasty ends 2002-ish? No, that was, it was later. Cause, no, oh, I yeah, guess right. by 2003, then I hooked up with um, Toss. Toss hooked me up. Toss. Toss Pappas. Okay. From the Vert guy who, who had a connection from, from he because he was on H Street 2. Okay. Back in the day, him and his brother Ben, R.I.P., and his dad, R.I.P., Shout out to Toss and his new family in Australia. He's killing it. Oh, he's right in now. Australia. All right. Yeah, he's back in Australia after his time in in the pen and everything that he went through. I mean, I don't know if you've seen his movie. No, but you have to watch it. Yeah, I'll check yeah, it out. It's called All This Mayhem. Okay, and it's on oh, Vice I've heard Films. Of it. Yeah, yeah, Vice I... Films. It's amazing. Like he, his story is so incredible. I have pictures from my house when I rented out a house in downtown San Diego of him and. His dad sitting on my couch and really we had and then and the, and the reason why I bring this up is because Toss Toss believed in me because that was that was my phone yeah that's that right. okay she's she's okay baby I'll be right there uh, anyways um, Toss was like uh, yeah one of the only pros on Vision so back to Vision okay Vision skateboards and he's like why don't you just get up why don't you just ride for Vision. I'll set up a meeting with Brad Dorfman because I was like dynasty stopped and I was about to move to Portland, Oregon because that all that went down. And I was like, all right, I'll ride. I'll ride. I'll ride for vision and I'll go up to fucking Oregon and I'll start skating Burnside. Yeah. And it'll be cool. And I'll move in, you know, when I was moving in with a girl that I was with at the time. Okay. And it was great. So. <laughs> I moved up there, and Toss had like, and Toss had on the way from San San Diego. We were driving. We stop in Costa Mesa at the Vision Factory. I have a meeting with Brad Dorfman and Toss Pappas and the graphic designer. Yeah, and we, I show, I show my portfolio with all my tear sheets from from the magazine coverage that I had from. From yeah. Thrasher to from Transworld mostly, Transworld mostly, yeah. and Big Brother, all the '90s magazines, Power so Edge. Like I was like, I no, I had a portfolio. Oh, okay. It was a nice portfolio put yeah. together, but the tear sheets—I call it tear sheets because I cut them out nicely and put them all oh, okay, in one okay. book. Yeah, 
So they're they're not real toys. It's not. <laughs> it's just a, that's just an expression. Yeah. So they're sheets out of they're they're actually ads and photos that were really in the magazine. Got it. And you put together a portfolio for it of it. Okay. So I have that. It's a book. Yeah. And I bring it. And I show it to Brad. And he's like, all right, you know. And he's like, right, let's do it. And then I was supposed to get a shoe, and Tuss had a shoe for a minute and a board and for a Vision Streetwear sneaker. And a board. I got like three boards out of it. They paid me like you know some money. Yeah, it was good. I was living off of it, and um, and then um, up north, huh? Yeah, and I was up north, yeah. and that was before I moved out here. So this is like two thousand four, three, four, f- five. You know, and you're what, like twenty one? <laughs> No, I was already like in. Haunt. I was already like uh, twenty six, oh, no. yeah, twenty eight. Yeah, I was like twenty eight. Oh, really? Yeah, I okay. was like twenty six or twenty eight around that time. I have to do the math, but yeah, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and then one sparked to move to New York. Oh well, wait, we skipped some stuff. Oh, we skipped. All right, you brought up New York, so yeah. <laughs> no, I mean no, but yeah. uh, I, I, when I said it was like I went to. Uh, up there and I was on yeah I was on vision and then oh and then I got okay this is what <laughs> this is crazy they had this <laughs> they had this team manager named Big Mike and I was like this guy was goofy man I was Make like sure. he yeah. he didn't <laughs> he didn't um Big Mike skate he didn't skate okay he like, was the team manager yeah, for 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 vision vision, right. vision skateboard so I I got they, I got sent to this contest, and uh, it was like an X Games qualifier. Really? Yeah, and it was in Texas. And I got like, if I would got, I got like twenty second or something, and it was top twenty gets top to advance 20. to the next thing. Damn. And I just goes out of the cut, and then I just got super wasted. I was <laughs> like, "Fuck this, man!" I'm at the hotel, and then I got mad at the team manager, and I called him Big Dyke. I was like, "It's like." Yeah. <laughs> You can't, and I told him, you can't even all have a curve, motherfucker. What are you trying to tell me? That's funny. <laughs> and then next thing I knew, Everett Rosecrans was calling me up and saying, uh, we're, it's not going to work out. Really? Uh, yeah. It's like, they, they hired somebody to fire me. Really? <laughs> <laughs> like I don't hired- know. Maybe Everett Rosecrans was a guy. He worked for Vans. He worked okay. for Vision. His, br- his son was a pro skateboarder, Kelly Rosecrans. He was awesome. They're not. They're not bad people. They're great people. It's just funny that yeah. he was the guy that ended up calling me one day. It was like you're. You're not getting your check this month. <laughs> I mean, I made five figures. It was, you know, like yeah. good big high five figures from that. That's crazy. And that was what? Like that's yeah. That's so good. Lived, that time for lived, sure. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Uh, it's good now. Yeah. So, wow. What year did the X Games start? When, when was that? Like they were around for a little bit of just coming on. I was to at the, the scene first. Or what? I didn't go to the. I mean, I lived and I did go. I, I didn't stay and I watched the contest. But the first X Games was in Mission Bay, in in San Diego, and that's when I lived at the beach. I had an apartment okay. at the same beach where I had auditioned for Primo, and got on the team Primo <laughs> for my one of my first like yeah. flow sponsors. I lived in an apartment on Jamaica Court, like right by where that at Mission Beach really? in San Diego. That like so that was my circle. that was my <laughs> first apartment. Yeah. I moved out of one, and, I, and that's when I was like 22. But I moved out of my parents' house. And I'm like, yeah, I'm getting an apartment. I got money from skating. What? I got my low rider. What? Damn. You know, so everyone could come to my my crib, and I could be at the beach if I wanted to surf. If it was too hot, I could go surf. I had a surfboard and Pacific Drive Skate Shop, which was our all of our our shop sponsor, was down there. Shout out to Skate Mafia and Peter Smolik and Dan Connolly and Jim and Sam and everybody at Pacific Drive. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Pacific Drive was right there, and there was just a scene. But the X Games was in Mission Bay, the first one ever. And okay. Tony, I remember Willie, my friend Willie Santos, was in it. And he did really good. I think Jamie Thomas was in it. There's a bunch of people. You know what's that funny about Willie Santos? He pretty much. I had a cassette tape of him doing trick tips. Yeah. And that was like one of the first uh, things I saw, like oh, skateboarding. A, v, a, v, a VHS. <laughs> a VHS. Yeah. 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 <laughs> cassette tape. I'm like, wait, he was just auto. V- tell, he was on an auto. <laughs> it was audio audio, tape yeah. Telling you oh, how to do Walkman, tricks. Uh, while I was skating. No, it was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. 
you were so yeah, you were living in. Oh no, that was just for the X. So that was the X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was living in Mission Beach, yeah. and the first X. I think yeah. it was. That we left off at you guys. Ninety. Uh, we gotta look that up. What the actual first year? Yeah, maybe ninety nine like or Ninety seven. Maybe. Maybe yeah. Not, yeah, like before it was definitely before, before the two thousands. That's crazy that yeah. you competed in that. That's awesome. No, I wasn't in that contest. No, I, no but you competed. Oh, in, I in, I in got the, later. Like, that yeah. was later. Yeah. I got flown to a qualifier, but that's awesome. All right, but so I, you uh, but before that, I mean ninety ninety yeah. ninety six. I qualified first out of all the pros at uh, Slam City Jam. That was the, those really? were the best contests ever. Damn. Hands down. Kareem Campbell won one one year. Um Canada, so awesome. The West Coast of Canada, beautiful women, good food, good weather. I mean, I used to love to go there. That's the Northwest, the great Northwest. That's why I ended up moving to Portland too, because I met that girl. Up at the contest? Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? That's like near what? Like I, met, Alaska I met her almost, through right? my and homie uh... Maiji in Portland and Danny Minnick. Who's another homie? He had we, he had a video premiere up there with all of us in it in a, in a theater in okay. Portland and in Seattle. We, he would just make all these dope videos. If you haven't seen him, Balance in the World of Chaos, Skate Nation, like guys from Tom Penny to Costin to Andrew Reynolds to to you really? know to you know like a lot of a lot of skaters are in his videos. Damn, Sheffy, um, Peter Smolik, yeah, Conley, all those guys. Um, those guys are all in Minix videos, but so I met her originally as premiere at the premiere that we were in of this okay. video, and then she drove me to the airport when I went back to San Diego in Portland, and then I saw her at Slam City Jam, and that's when it was on. <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, you won." Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a no, that that was bad. So I I didn't win. I, I oh, qualified, you qualified first. first. I, mean, right, I won right, the right. first day. Yeah. <laughs> the next day I was still in the top twenty, but I went out and partied. And yeah, like I, 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 I pre-celebrated. I shouldn't have. Mm, no, I should have just been like, I'm gonna do my same run. I'm gonna do my same yeah. run tomorrow. And but I wasn't thinking that. No, I was just having hyped. a good time. Yeah, like, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's not only now these guys really know. They're like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna get this money. I'm gonna Dead focus. I'm yeah. gonna skate and then I can party. But well, like, then it was just like ah. Were those prize pools like decent back then no, for those contests? See, it wouldn't no, be. It like, wouldn't. It's not. I mean, the same. The most I ever won like was like, like six hundred bucks or something. It really? wasn't that much, you know. <laughs> but I have That's trophies funny. and stuff. But yeah. there wasn't that much. Much like the prizes weren't a lot for first. Yeah. Like, then it wasn't. There wasn't money like it is now. These guys get paid just to show up at street league. That's true. Yeah. So it's way different. Well. So you cursed out the <laughs> the team manager. Was that what happened? Nah. A vision. A so vision. that's why. And then yeah. what happened after that? Like what was your next Shit. move? You live it up north. Oh, right? no, oh man, no. There's another whole chapter where I was working with Rod James, Rod and Steve James, two twins from uh that work with Tech Deck and all this stuff. They had this company okay. called Finesse. Finesse skateboards, and they gave me a pro model, paid me a little really? bit of money, but not really. But damn, like I at least got one or two checks from them, but um, royalty checks. But they gave me, you know, a board, and 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 um, that's when I was at the end, like at the last part of living in Portland um, before I moved out here. And the crazy part is that about that is that's how I met Oscar basically because Oscar got his boards for Bodega made at. Uh, where Rod and Steve James are, where Finesse was. Okay. And so when I came out here, we went to skate the Autumn Bowl in Brooklyn one night, and like Oscar was with us. We went and skated. He came to Valley Stream, where I was staying at the time, and we went to Greenpoint, and we skated, and I was like, oh. Basically, it it just one thing led to another. We were talking about boards, where he got his boards made, and he knew that Rod and... Rod and give me a pro model before, and then I was just like, "Well, you, I like what you're doing with Bodega right now, so why don't I just write for that?" And then when they send my boards here, it'll cut, it'll cut uh, shipping costs. Really, you'll get the boards, oh. and I'll start working with you. And I, and he's the first one that ever let me uh, draw graphics, really? draw my own first board. Yeah, damn. Oscar was the, he's the catalyst of me. I yeah. mean, I was already making art, but he's the first one to yeah. pay. That's awesome. To, be- to believe in me to pay for a board that was my artwork on it. 
Damn, and that's why you moved to New York, like, or that's not or, why. That's just or, I mean, part, of it. Kind of part yeah, of it. Yeah, the reason why the I process. moved to New York was because yeah. my girlfriend at the time was moving out here to go to SVA for photography. She's oh, a photographer, okay. so she went to art school out here, and I was like, oh, and yeah. I already knew Harold. Yeah, so I had some homies from coming out here. Okay, from and from on tour, so I was like, oh, that's cool. Let me go to New York for a little yeah. bit. That's this chapter of yeah, my life. Exactly. No, I was just rolling with it. It's like, all right, I went to San Diego. <laughs> A lot of my friends never left San Diego, and that's that's cool. But it's like, I feel like I, yeah, I have gotten I'm so much, so many things out of out of my life that I wouldn't have had good experiences and bad experiences. Yeah, that all make a good experience. Hundred <laughs> percent. With and yeah. it wouldn't have happened if I would have just stayed there. You know, I don't know what would have happened. Who knows? Yeah. One yeah, of my think, friends, Dan Roger, who's from Iowa, always like, you motherfucker, you should have moved to L.A. For, what are you doing? <laughs> you're in New York. He's like, you're, L.A.'s run by skateboarders. Why aren't you out there? He, the last time I saw him at Tampa, he's like, you yeah. should have went to, you should have went to, well, that, you should have went to L.A. Like, I was like, I, I can still go there, dude. Yeah, like, life so now. Is, it's not over. <laughs> yeah. I'm still creating. Still going. And there's some stuff that, you know, mm. so... That's funny. So, that's when you met Oscar. Yeah, when you moved here, Tylenol Bowl. Tylenol Bowl. Damn. Ty Bowl. And then Autumn Bowl. Tylenol. Why was why was it? Oh, that's a good history. Why was it the Tylenol Bowl and then and the Autumn Bowl? That's a good question. I have no idea. Huh. Tylenol. Maybe yeah. that old. Maybe that warehouse was owned by Tylenol. That's a possibility. Dro- the yeah. by them before maybe. I could see that. Yeah. So that's it. And you've been in New York. Like since, yeah. What? I mean, I've went back to Oregon and to California, and I've yeah. traveled to Europe to Europe twice, and I've been down to Puerto Rico. But, mm. but, yeah. But for the most part, living, yeah, it's been. She so must have liked it when you showed up and you were like, first guy I, here. I, 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 there's, there's love. It's a love hate <laughs> relationship, man. Yeah, yeah. Especially with the city, it's a love hate relationship. It's true, and it you is. know, it's like you got there's good and bad. Like I said, I never thought I would live here, but now I can't imagine not ha- having ever done it. Mm. And it's um. What know. do you think you um, uh, like learned from living in like I don't know, just in a big city like this, you know, in New York. Um. You know what I mean? Just, just seeing all those just, cold pe- cultures yeah. and people, and like I've all learned that, that you, you can't. Know? So most places you can't go outside without seeing somebody else. <laughs> oh yeah! As soon as you walk outside, there's somebody <laughs> walking by, and you're stoop or whatever. But um, that's true. Just the big the big thing is is that humans are you know pretty much animals. And we have to be empathetic for each other, and and that is one thing. And and you can see all how many other people have ideas and that are creative and things that they want to express that I would have never even understood or saw mm. in, in a military town where I grew up. If I still thought, if I still had the same. Um, mindset that I had when I was living in San Diego as a kid, yeah. but I can't say that I wouldn't. That wouldn't have changed yeah. because as you grow, that changes. And right. now there's a whole cool scene in San Diego that I want. I still want to be part of, and I want to go there and use the art and the music that I've made here to share with them, with the people that they're, so they understand what I've been doing out here. So there is part of me that has ideas to be there. Set up some art shows. Um, yeah. Set you know set up some music shows, and and share with the people that know me that know that I moved out here and that are part of the industry and that are that are, are creatives as well. So that's part yeah. of it. Do you do you perform music like in New the York? The last time or? I played was I with Ron Allen at Max Fish. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like somewhere we've recently. Done it, and we've done a show at um, JFK Center. Really. With me, Paulo Diaz. Uh, Chuck Treese, what? Quim Cardona. <laughs> Damn. We got paid for that gig, and it was at JFK Center for JFK's 100th birthday. <laughs> really? Yeah, and that my what? friend Jimmy, you know Jimmy Pelletier from the ping pong guy, Jimmy, Jimmy Skateboarder, Maybe. the mayor I might know of him DC. If I see him, but yeah. He's so dope. He comes out <laughs> and stays at the Brooch's Brew with Fink. I'm sure I know him then. Yeah. Glasses. He set up, he, he, 
he's like a he's the coordinator coordinator of that whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> he, and they have they have a mini ramp, they have a street course, so we get to skate and play music. And he's always he's still trying to make more festivals like that. Really? Yeah, and I mean we were supposed to do something this summer. We did it that like last year or a couple of years ago. I mean, I know he's done it more than once and he's coordinated he's coordinated like Tony Hawk and Rodney Mullen coming to the Smithsonian Institute and all this stuff. He does so much stuff in for DC Wheels. Okay. That's his his thing. If you go on Instagram, he's got DC Wheels and it's like a non for profit. Like he hooks up kids with oh, skateboards really? awesome. and all that stuff. It's really cool what he's doing. Yeah, but so, Jimmy hired, got us hired to go yeah. down there. It was dope. Was that like I got, recently? I got, I got or is that, when was that? This was like a couple of years ago. Really? Not that long ago. <laughs> I got flown down, flown down from JFK to to DC. He got picked up in a Cadillac, a day to a what? hotel. <laughs> it was super dope, and really? I got paid to play my music and sing. That's the and I, I was like, if I can do this every weekend, yeah, if I can do that every weekend, <laughs> it'd be just that'd be it. But That's you know, funny. you get good things and you got to build on it. But yeah, uh, besides that show, I've played a couple times at Max Fish. Yeah, with Ron and. Only one time cause... I did. One time I did an opening, like I introduced my friend Mark Razo's band, um, and I did a little singing a cappella thing. Um, so I know, like, you were you were writing for Bodega, and you went to like you guys did some tours across like other countries and yeah. stuff like that. And weren't you performing in those like on that no, tour we too? Were, or no, we were, I brought my guitar, but oh, and okay. I was gonna, but I was we 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 didn't end up putting that into the tour there wasn't it didn't end up work out uh, no. working out like that yeah that could be but awesome it would like be doing cool both of yeah because we going around and the, yeah. the place um in hildesheim where the place that was selling bodega boards okay there's a really cool scene and we had talked to nella the the manager there about maybe getting me to play at some venues you said but hildesheim where is that hildesheim, it's north north germany oh okay. I think it's north northeast germany damn how sure. is germany was it like there, man? Oh, I've been there several times. Just, really? I mean, and I think twice with with Invisible, and then twice with uh, Bodega. Yeah, and I've been. It's it's been it's been fortunate to go there. It's it's pretty awesome. I like Germany. Yeah, yeah, it's a great place. There's You've a been really so cool many skates. countries. Jeez, man, <laughs> that's crazy. And all over it's the states, skating. Too, yeah. yeah, I mean, if that was, it's like it's part of it. It's so international now. Well, I but I haven't been to Spain. I haven't been to um, South America. I haven't been to Brazil yet to skate, but mm. that's where I want to go. I want definitely want to go to Spain, but and I haven't been to Italy. But I've been all over Western Europe, and you know, from okay. from Austria to Luxembourg to Amsterdam to really, you know, yeah, it's crazy. All for skating, yeah, God damn man, yeah, what. Yeah, it must be and Japan. Seeing the Japan way twice oh. and Taiwan. Really? Yeah, and Australia. Japan must have been a trip. <laughs> yeah, and now I mean, it's crazy. Oh, shout out to to Eight Bong Man. He just sent me a shirt from Japan. <laughs> I got it uh, like two days ago in the mail. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eight Bong Man. <laughs> it's a he's number eight. He's like draw. He works with um, real life pillage, which is Peter Smollett's company, I've and heard he of him. does. Yeah. Yeah, he does uh, this. He does this cool character that looks like a Playboy bunny, and he draws. It. He just sent me one of the shirts. Awesome. Check my oh, story. Yeah. Yeah, I put it on it my out. story yeah. today. <laughs> it's only gonna last for twenty four hours, so you better look now. Oh, it's long gone by the time they see it. But yeah, I'll check. <laughs> so, where were we? Oh, in Japan, right? Mm -hmm. What was it like there? Like, was that like a complete, just completely different from here? It like, was blew so, out your perspective, or it what? was. It was just, I was younger, so it was what you think. I mean, I was really into, like, anime and and Voltron and skateboard and graffiti. And it was like, really? so I went, the first time I went there was 1994 with my sponsor, Tribal Streetwear. I didn't know anime even existed back, like, <laughs> you know. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm not even sure They, call, they used out. to call it Japanimation. Where would you see it? Like, on VHS tapes. Oh, Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I bought VHS tapes. Yeah, they had a that's awesome, really, really awesome movie called Akira. Okay, Have you never seen Akira. No, 
<laughs> Robotech, <laughs> Robotech, me. all this stuff. All right, okay, you're gonna, yeah, have, we'll to, I'm gonna have to another, email you all this lesson, stuff. Yeah. Um, but anyways, Akira was one of the first ones that I fell in love with. Then there's Gogo 13, the professional. But this was all about so going to Japan was like we're like what we can buy this. Oh, look at this Walkman. Look at these headphones. <laughs> there was no. It was like it was there was no, and that was one of the first places I saw at where everybody had a cell phone. They were flip really? phones, but in America, people weren't even using cell phones yet. Really? Yeah. I thought we were the first. No, no. <laughs> well, I guess not. We get them they, from yeah, yeah Japan. From there. They had, they yeah. had, they everybody, they like no. Wow. Most people didn't have landlines like how it is now. Yeah. In America, most people don't. I mean, I'm sure if you grow up in a house, you probably have a landline. But most people in the city only have their f- cell phones. Yeah. It's like they don't. It's not normal to have a, a phone too. It's like, yeah. That's it. And back then, that's how that was, 94. So I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. These guys all have phones. That's funny. And then maybe there was beepers, you know? It's like, so, and when we're there, this, like, hyper, hyper overload of sensory overload, like. Yeah, must have been. Yeah, lights lights everywhere. Times Square, but (laughs) I'm Asian, you know? It's like really the whole thing, like, and we could buy it, like, like, oh, let's go get these, um, Models like I bought like, um, model cars like little Honda Civics and really yeah <laughs> like I had a <laughs> NSX. All my friends, all my homies, I brought back cars for because they were into lowrider like Civics and yeah. the, they were into rice burners in San Diego. <laughs> so I got them little uh, Acura NSX, NSX Hot Wheels. And then I bought like a Nissan Skyline model, like, and I put it together. I brought and this, and I bought airsoft guns. Like you could buy these guns with, like, little ple- <laughs> They look re- le- replica of real guns. This is before all the crazy gun violence that's happened. So, so how was the American dollar like compared over there? Like, was it worth? Like, could you buy a lot more stuff with I, your money, or was it about the same? Um, I think I could. I was thinking the dollar was pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. At that point, because I didn't have any worries about but money yeah, just or like, what yeah, I was buy buying. Whatever, yeah. yeah. And then That's I funny. also, you know, I also had a whole, like, I brought a huge box of product because it was for my clothing sponsor. Okay. And I was on tour and it was like break dancing, graffiti. We went on tour with um this hip hop group called the Beat Nuts. Okay. Beat Nuts. <laughs> it was dope. If you don't know what Beat Nuts is, look at that too, because they're never Ill, heard of them. Ill, Ill Ill MCs from Brooklyn, and and um so and so we were on tour with them, and then we had break dancing and graffiti artists, and then we had skateboarding. So we would skate in the daytime and do demos, yeah. And then the graffiti artists would paint while like while we were skating, and then at night they would have a show where the break dancers and the MCs would perform. Damn. And we would do that That's for wild. like two weeks every night. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, and so and tribal got us out there, but yeah, it was so ma- amazing. You can buy all the stuff that you can, like you like you. Oh, you can get this in Japan. Everything had a vending machine. Like you could go get vending. I've seen stuff that. Out of yeah. Vending machine. It's gotten even more. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh I'm yeah. Sure. I'm sure. That's funny. Yeah. So yeah. What's uh. <laughs> I can't believe how many trips you've been on, man. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Like so many through skateboarding I mean, too. But there's to mine, my it's not that much if you compare to like some skaters that are still from the time that I've I've done trips, oh, yeah. they're still constantly on planes. That gets tiring, man. It's like I'm not I'm not that mad that I don't go on that many trips right now. <laughs> That's true. But I can see that. I like it, but it's 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 gnarly. Yeah, like, I guess well, just from my perspective, because I've never even yeah. been to another country. Right. You know, it's like Mexico and Canada really yeah. quick. Yeah. But but that's part of North America. Right. But it's and it's still yeah, when you walk another country. on foot to somewhere, you're yeah. like you really feel like you feel like you cheated. <laughs> yeah. 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 What all right, where do you recommend going? One country right <laughs> off the bat. Like, where right. should I go first? Wow. Tough one, Depends right? on what you want to do. That's true. <laughs> That's, I don't yeah. know. Probably be skating. Okay, just to yeah. skate. Yeah. Go to Indonesia. No, I don't even. Know. <laughs> um, I swear, my homie keeps telling me, like, let's go to Indonesia. Hmm. There's some skate stuff happening. In different I'm down. Places. Let's do um, it. Yeah, I don't know. What I can't recommend. I mean, no. if you want to, what was? Do you want to speak English? <laughs> I don't <laughs> do you know. Wanna, do you want to be able to? Like, what? It's up to. Yeah, it's like. Yeah. There's so there's so many good things. There's good and bad things. Like 
Hmm. I think if you went to Europe first, it would yeah. probably be the best because you can, you can go around, there. Right? It's like st- going to states, but you're in a different country. Mm. You don't have, and you can experience a little bit different in each. Like go to France. Yes, yeah, I true. had some really good times in France. Really? Yeah, I lived in the south of France for a little bit. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I was there for Y two K when oh really when Y two K was happening here. I had a girlfriend ended? named yeah. She was out there named Geraldine. She was Donna. Damn. Donna. Donna. Yeah. I went and stayed there with her um, family and that's pretty cool. And had Christmas and New Year's Eve and went snowboarding and I went hunting with her father and her father shot a pheasant. <laughs> 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 and then brought it back and stuck it in his back in his really? jacket like this. Yeah, man, it's incredible. It's incredible. Like some of these, like when I say it out loud, it, it's like yeah. doesn't seem like it, it happened. Seemed... <laughs> it did. I'm like, wait, that did happen? Yeah, that did happen. That's but, fun. Yeah. So now, so you've been you living in New York for a while. Like how? So you're not touring with any company, no. right? Mm-hmm. Through this time. You pretty much stopped. Not since with uh, Bodega the, was that 2016 or 15. Where'd you go? To Europe. Europe. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I was so actually that's like three years ago. I was writing for the team at that time, and yeah. we were tossing it around. But yeah, yeah. I don't think well, we I went twice. Going, yeah. We went 15 and 16, I think, because we mm. went with Gorinsky. Chris Gorinsky came and filmed and made an awesome video. Yeah, I saw, that, saw video. that video. It came yeah. out really good. Yeah, he did. He did a good, great job. Damn. So now what are you up to now? Like what's uh, um now yeah. I'm doing like a pretty much full time at Homage Skateboard Academy in Brooklyn. Yeah. Teaching yeah, skating. Oh yeah. Teaching skating, selling boards, talking about skateboarding, letting oh, really? everybody know stuff, you know. Yeah. Dropping knowledge dropping on the youth. Dropping knowledge doing it to me right yeah, now. Yeah, dropping Thank knowledge you. on the youth, you know. <laughs> um Damn. Yeah, I'm there. And it's good. It's nearby the crib, so Yeah. Um, I get to skate. It's a good day. I can, you know, always know that I can do a, a five zero or a slash grind or a backside disaster. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're such an inspiration to me. I mean, I just love what you've done in your life. Like, just constantly stay creative and do what you love to do and figure it out with a smile. You know, what try. I mean? That's yeah, like that's. Going. I don't know. Yeah, man. that's the way to do it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. We'll call it here, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah, you got any last words, uh, shout outs, anything you want to share with anyone? Uh, not really, man. Nah. Just like, yeah. Pretty much like, shared it already. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> do your thing. And I'm glad that you're, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's hell cool. yeah. Thanks for coming out, man. Yeah. All right. All right. That's it. Signing off. <laughs> yeah, right, chat. Man.